Welcome to our show. Your host Ahmad Rana is here. Today I have found Mr. Bashir Ahmad. He is an MMA fighter and the only Pakistani international MMA fighter. He is also a veteran from US Iraq war. He is uh, permanently moving to Pakistan, but today I found him here in Silverback Studio. So let me talk to him. Hello sir, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Thank you for giving us time. So please tell my viewers something about you. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you Next TV. Thank you uh, Ahmad Rana. Um, well, uh, first of all, I'm not the only Pakistani fighter. I okay. used to be the only Pakistani fighter, but now as the sport has grown, there's uh, a lot more. Um, but uh, I was the first person to represent Pakistan in international MMA. Um, and uh, I made my debut in one championship where I won my fight. So I was also the first person to uh, win representing Pakistan. Um, and uh, I'm known as the godfather of mixed martial arts in Pakistan because of my role in helping promote the sport and, and bring the sport uh, closer and closer to the mainstream and growing an MMA community. So Godfather, let me ask you this question now. A person like me or, uh -huh. or you know, Pakistan, uh -huh. usually people watch cricket a lot. Uh -huh. you know, hockey is not that popular mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Where do you see Pakistan MMA from last time you went to Pakistan and mm -hmm. now? Well, the last time I went to Pakistan was in August, so it wasn't very long ago. Um, but um, the future, from where it started to where it is now, it's been a steady growth going up. And I, and I still see that. In fact, I see the, the, the more growth coming up in the, in the future in the next few years. So I believe, and I sincerely believe, that um, MMA in Pakistan is going to be one of the most followed sports in the country. Um, getting close to cricket. Um, cricket is almost like a religion in Pakistan, so I don't know <laughs> if, it, if we'll ever uh, reach that level. But that's our goal, that's our aim. You know, when we aim to beat cricket, then maybe we'll get close to it. And if we get close to cricket, that's a very big accomplishment very big. Uh, yeah, in, in Pakistan. So there are now uh, more international fighters coming up in Pakistan um, that have fought internationally, have won internationally, have done uh, well, and they're, they're getting uh, some exposure as well. Like uh, you have Alumi Kareem, you have Amin Mushtaba, Waqar, Omar, Oves Shah, and more. This is just the tip of the iceberg. M many more are coming. You have more and more gyms growing in Pakistan. Uh, people doing MMA just for fitness, not just to fight, but you know, to be in shape and to learn some self-defense. We have uh, more shows, so more events coming where different fighters can come and uh, test their skills and people coming, just, uh, you know, just the regular public coming uh, to watch um, MMA events. Uh, I, I actually believe that very soon, maybe in the next couple of years, if we keep having events, then MMA will be the most followed live sporting event in Pakistan. Because I've seen um, the, you know, when TV plays domestic cricket that happens in Pakistan, there's nobody there. Uh, they, they're in uh, large stadiums and there's like 200 people there. Uh, we have small uh, stadiums and we don't have enough places for people to sit. You know, we have um, almost a thousand people come in uh, to watch. And these aren't people that are uh, associated with the sport. These are just random people who are following and are fans and want to come and experience a live MMA event. So it's growing a lot. That's, uh, that's awesome to mm -hmm. know that Pakistani mm -hmm. people are getting interested in mm -hmm. MMA. And, mm -hmm. you know, especially after eating Pakistani meal, we should, you know, do yes. uh, MMA. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. my viewers will yeah. agree with me yes. on that too. Because uh -huh. we eat a lot of oily food and especially the biryani, you know, and yeah. the, <laughs> and the yeah. chicken tikka masala, pie. Yeah. And we need to balance that. We need to balance that. Yeah. So, so we this need is, to MMA is perfect. MMA. Cricket's not so good for. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I play yeah. cricket and that's inside of the program I'm becoming, you know, more heavy. Yeah. So get back to your uh -huh. US, you are a US veteran, you fought oh, yeah. in war yeah. for Iraq. Yeah. Yeah. Please tell my viewers about, you know, how did you join the army? Yeah. What was the experience? I was going to university uh, here and um, I went to a class that I thought was a, uh, a class about military science or military history, but it was actually a class that they wanted people to join the, the US army. army. Um, Which year was that? This was in uh, 2000, in 2000, uh, 2001. Okay. Yeah. This was in 2001. So right after 9-11? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> so I was uh, in this class and they gave uh, us just some information about um, the benefits of the, of the army and I brought it back to, and my roommate saw it and um, he looked through it actually very carefully and the next day he joined up. Um, 
And so I started thinking and I was like, you know, uh, this is something that I want to experience once uh, in my life. Uh, and even now, because of the experience of, of the army, I, you know, once a soldier, I think always a soldier. And so then you he, were like around 20 years old? Yeah, I, I was around 20. Um, and so I also joined because I didn't want to wake up when I was 40 years old and be, you know, what if, you know. And I, the train. I, yeah, you know, I, I want to experience as many things uh, as I can uh, while I'm in this world. And uh, so the army is one of them. So I joined the army. Um, I joined the National Guard, actually. So I didn't actually expect to be deployed overseas. I joined the National Guard as a medic. And um, after I joined and after I did my training is when the invasion of Iraq happened. And so the unit that I was with, they got uh, called up to go to Iraq for the first time in, since World War II. Wow. It was the first time that that unit had been deployed to go overseas. So what was your parents' reaction when they found out that you're going overseas in Iraq? Oh, of course they were shocked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, of course they were shocked. And uh, of course, uh, because, you know, as being um, Muslim Americans, you know, there's always that, that issue, you know, um, is American society against Islam, you know, is this war a part of this, you know, uh, any kind of prejudice or bigotry and, you know, all these issues uh, come in and it's obviously, you know, it's a sensitive topic. So um, that was also, you know, one thing that, you know, people would be like, oh, why is uh, Bashir going, he, you know, it's a, it's a Muslim country and, you know, so there's a lot of conflict uh, going on at that time. But after the initial shock and the initial question and, uh, questions about, you know, that people had, it, it was all just about them wanting to be, for me to be safe. Like you know, yeah, you yeah. want to show your patriotic American side too? Well, uh, I mean, I don't think that you have to join the army or go to war to show yourself to be a patriotic okay. American. In fact, I think you can do the uh, opposite if you want to. You know, you can be against war, you can be vocal, uh, you, you know, and also be a patriotic American. So um, I don't think it's just the, the, as, as simple as, you know, grab a gun and, and go off to war, you know. Yeah, sure. I, I, I think that's very dangerous to a country, actually, you know, to have that kind of uh, uh, thinking. But obviously, you know, we, um, I, um, I, I was raised uh, in the United States, and I know I'm a mixture of Pakistani and American. Um, and uh, the, the core values that uh, America was founded on, you know, the freedom of expression, the freedom of thought, the freedom of religion, all these things are very important. Uh, I think important to me, and I think they should be important to the rest of the world as well. Of course. So uh, these values I, uh, that the United States is based upon, I do hold um, uh, very dear, and, and I hope that the uh, that these values are you know spread in a positive way. But that got off track over there. <laughs> yeah. So experience yeah. in the army in Iraq. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So please tell my viewers how was the experience in Iraq. Um, the experience in Iraq was, uh, the way I like to tell people is that I got to see um, the best and worst of humanity, right? Oh, wow. um, you know, I saw things um, that uh, I'm sure many people, including myself, wish, you know, would never want to see. I saw innocent people um, be hurt and even killed. Uh, but then I also saw people who one day uh, were, you know, trigger happy and bloodthirsty. Uh, turn around and then do something very, very kind for like children, you know. So you see, you see that Happiness the world and at the same time. At the same time, and then you really see that the world is not black and white at all. It's just, it's, it's everything's gray. There is no black and white, you know. Um, so you know, you have the person, the the freedom fighter insurgent in Iraq, who's fighting for his family, but maybe he's doing something cruel on the side, uh, you know. Uh, for that to happen. There's the American soldier, you know, uh, maybe he comes from a small town and he goes over to Iraq and he has all these racial prejudices and at first maybe he's, uh, you know, viewing things in a negative light, but then after a few months, you know, he's like, oh, these are people just like me, you know. It's just so many different human emotions and human experiences uh, going on in a very powerful setting. Where did you start the MMA? I actually started MMA. Um, my interest in martial arts came when I was in the military. Um, in the military, in Iraq had, or here? In, in Iraq, yeah, oh, okay. in Iraq, yeah. So uh, in Iraq, you well, in my experience, um, we had uh, you know sometimes we'd be very busy and sometimes we'd have nothing to do. So uh, I would uh, uh, read a lot, and I'm uh, very fond of reading, and so I had a lot of time to read, and I started reading about martial arts, and I started getting interested in martial arts philosophy. I started reading about the biography of Muhammad Ali, who I looked up to as a as a child, and and these things all <coughs> mixed together. So that when I came back from Iraq, I um, started training in martial arts. 
as a way to kind of get my mind away from uh, the war and and yes. everything because when I came back, war, yeah, yeah it, was, it was it was a, a, a odd time of transition. So it really helped me. It was kind of like a therapy for me. Um, and so I started training in martial arts and I um, saw the MMA. You know, I saw that there was this competition where it's it's like a like a proper fight. It's a real fight. And uh, I thought that that is a the best place for me to take my martial arts training and see if it works and to help my training. Was it very tough to join the MMA, the training? Uh, because you know, um, a lot of my viewers probably yeah. didn't hear about MMA yeah. fighters. Uh, look, uh, MMA is tough, right? But I joined because I thought it was fun. And so, um, you know, if you join because you want to learn and uh, you want to learn some skills, you want to be in shape, it's, it's a lot of fun. It doesn't have to, yeah. Don't believe, but <laughs> no, a lot of blood come out. Hold on, know. hold on. <laughs> Let me finish what I'm saying. So, like, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun for the person who wants to train recreationally. And then with the person, if you wanted to be a professional, yeah, it's tough. What about a know? person like me? <laughs> a person like you? I mean, I can show you something in a little bit, you know, or right now, it's, it's up to you. But... It, even a person like you, you can do uh, a lot of the training that they do in MMA and you can get the health benefits, you can get some self-defense skills and you don't have to worry about getting a black eye or getting uh, injured, you know? Viewers, let me take a break. <laughs> when we come back, he, Mr. Bashir is going to show us some skills and I hope I can learn and then I can join MMA too. Aesthetics Institute of Cosmetology. Now is the time. Only school to offer cosmetology, nail technology, aesthetics, Many reasons to attend cosmetology school, freedom of self-employment, working with others, helping people, financial stability, learn new and exciting things. Financial aids available to those who qualify. Call us today, 540-313-4493 or 240-631-2220. For a happy living, improve your credit today. Best credit repair services around. Exercise your legal rights. Fix your credit today. We have the expertise and knowledge to bring your good credit back. We offer 100% satisfaction and money back guarantee. Free initial consultation. Please call Asad Khan 1-800-691-0190 or visit our website www.creditfixedu.com. Acidity ka ho gaya dabba gol Jab se liya ashmi is pagol Fitness meri hai anmol Raz hai ashmi is pagol Paas na pakke cholesterol Saat hai ashmi is pagol Meri ghar mein is ka ahem rol Sab ke liye ashmi is pagol
This is Bashir Ahmed here with Ahmed Rana in the studio. So Bashir, tell me, you've mm -hmm. been to international fight, mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. fought over like, you know, dozen fight mm -hmm. internationally, mm -hmm. you've been to half dozen countries mm -hmm. for fighting mm -hmm. MMA. Mm -hmm. Which country and which opponent, opponent was the most exciting and tough fight for you? Um, I think the, my most exciting fight was my first one against uh, Wan Shin, Shannon Wirachai. That took place in Singapore. Um, and uh, Shannon is a very, very tough opponent. He's a very, very skilled guy, and I think he has a, a chance of being champion uh, in the future. So I feel very blessed and lucky that I got a chance to fight him and beat him. Um, so that fight was very exciting because it was the first time Pakistan was being represented, and I remember all I the people. Huh? Sorry to cut yeah, you. Yeah. I remember that fight mm -hmm. for my viewers yeah. that you had a Pakistan flag around you too. Yeah. yeah, 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 and I was very bloody as well. That, that was one of the main things. Everything, all my clothes were just covered in blood um, uh, in that fight. In the, in the first round, I got cut, and um, everyone got very worried. That everyone was watching in Pakistan, and, um, you know, they're like, this is the first time we're being represented internationally. Is the fight going to stop in the first minute because of a cut? <laughs> yes. But they let the fight go on, and uh, I came back, and I overcame my opponent and uh, got covered in blood uh, in the process. Um, yeah, so that was my most. Uh, so how did the fight. audience react? You know, you. Oh, the Singapore. audience loved it. Yeah, the audience loved it. Yeah. <laughs> what the, was your last fight? Uh, when did you had a my, last fight? <clears throat> my last fight was October seventh in uh, Yangon, uh, Myanmar, and I fought uh, a contender from uh, EFC, uh, the league. Uh, he came in and uh, I, I beat him and. 83 was seconds. Was? It was in Yangon, Myanmar. Okay. Yeah, so I beat him in 83 seconds with a wow. uh, yeah with a leg lock. Yeah. Wow. I gotta be careful sitting next to you. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's talk about Pakistan since uh -huh. you're going to Pakistan now. Uh -huh. What are you starting there? And you know, of course, MMA is growing. You already tell my mm -hmm. viewers on that. What's your role now? As you are going as a fighter, as a coach, like uh, what's uh, your next next step? Well, whenever I go to Pakistan, I I view myself as kind of a mentor for everybody else because. My view, and I think this is also influenced by uh, America, um, because it, you know, in the United States, we like to um, think that a growth comes from letting people do what they want to do. You know, you don't want the government to control you or do everything. You know, yes. so I have taken that same approach um, with Pakistan. I don't want to be the person that says you do this, and you know, we're, that that person's not working with us, and you know. I don't want to be that person. I want to encourage people to take action and uh, promote MMA on their own, and I'll give them the guidance and advice and, you know, uh, make everyone into their own uh, godfather of MMA in Pakistan, you know, make everyone in, into somebody who's influencing MMA in Pakistan. So I think that's really why they call me the godfather of MMA in Pakistan, because uh, I have that role. You know, I don't want to be the president of MMA in Pakistan. I don't want to be... You want to be, be a godfather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but not in the mafia way, you know. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, it seems like Godfather is your favorite movie too. <laughs> it's a good movie. Yeah, yeah. It's a good movie. So uh, back... We have an event coming up uh, as well. Yeah, so that, that's, that's one of the things that, you know, that I do. If you want to be a little more specific um, is um, I help organize events. There's, uh, Please talk to my viewers. Tell them when the event is yeah, coming. Yeah, so the, uh, the event is coming uh, January 27th uh, in Lahore. Uh, it's called Fighting Alliance, uh, so you can search that up on social media. Uh, it's being run by a company called Impact Sport Productions. Uh, they've done a lot for uh, January MMA. 2017. 2017, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, two th not, not a year from now, but like two months from now, yeah. So uh, that's going to be a very big event. We have fighters coming from uh, hopefully around four or five countries right now where they're, they're dealing with their visas and everything, getting all that sorted. So this is going to be... Uh, so you know, international every... fighters are coming. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So yeah, we don't yeah. have international cricket, but we're going to have international MMA. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. And we've That's already had... news. We, yeah, we've already had international MMA for the past two years in Pakistan. So what's wrong with the bringing the cricket team as well in Pakistan? You know, the security is there, like you are doing the MMA. Yeah. Nothing against MMA. No, 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 I understand. Um... I, I think maybe because uh, we don't have the media exposure. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. I, I, yeah. I hope uh, next TV team and uh -huh. we are. Uh, oh, I hope you so. Yeah. To you know yeah. promote you, uh -huh. especially MMA mm -hmm. and especially mm -hmm. you know what you have done for the mm -hmm. Pakistan country. Mm -hmm. Last question, mm -hmm. I always ask all my celebrity, mm -hmm. you know, my mm -hmm. viewers probably got bored by that question, but mm -hmm. I'm still going to ask you mm -hmm. a great message yeah. for young generation, uh -huh. especially in America, obesity, yeah. and you know, the young kids mm -hmm. on iPad, mm -hmm. iPhone, mm -hmm. technology yeah. is making yeah. us, I would say dumb, I don't mm -hmm. want to say that in front of camera, <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> maybe uh, uh, unintelligent, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, 
I, I usually, when people ask me to say a message, I usually um, say the same thing, and I'll say, I'll say it again. Um, I would say it's faith, unity, and discipline. You know, so you, you have faith in yourself and what you can achieve. Have faith in have faith in God and have faith in the people who support you around you. Uh, unity, you know, unity, you know, have harmony in your society and with your family. Um, and uh, discipline, you know, it, it, consistency is hard, all hard work is is consistency. You know, it's just doing that what you're what you're supposed to do over a period of time, and it will get you the results that you need. You know. So that, 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 that's my message to everybody. And as for um, you know, being stuck on your phone and being stuck in front of a screen, well, um, I don't know. I, I think we're going to have maybe a Maybe join MMA. Yeah, that, that'll help. That'll help. But yeah. maybe in the future, you can have a microchip in your brain and you can <laughs> do MMA virtually. I don't know. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you so getting much crazy. Yeah. for Thank giving you. us yeah. time. You know, viewers, you were watching Bashir Ahmed, the MMA fighter, the godfather of Pakistan, and a US veteran. I hope mm. you learned a lot of lessons from him. I have learned a lot of lessons. I'm going to work on my MMA skills. At the first, I will try to lose weight. Please keep <laughs> watching Next TV. Please keep watching AR Show. Thank you so much, your host, Ahmed Rana. See you till next time. Bye bye.